older than you know yourself? I know you done took it off. That's because you ain't ready. You know, Jesse do plan to say, y'all ain't ready for me. He said, I'm trying to get your money right, and y'all ain't even wanting to listen to it. He said, y'all ain't ready for me. He said, stay broke. You ain't ready. <laughs> y'all ain't ready. Stay bound then. Stay bound. You ain't ready. Because you want to keep on going over there on the playground with Billy and playing with Billy, then you want to come back and fight. No, stay over there. We don't, we don't want you coming back when we already strategized and got the playbook. How are we going to do this? And then you're going to come back asking questions. What I miss? Too much. A season can throw you off decades. One season miss can throw you off decades. It can derail your whole destiny. And people talking about, well, I get it when they come back around. Baby, seasons don't come back around. The seasons of God are not like the, the spring, summer, fall, winter. No, seasons. One missed season can derail your whole destiny. While you were over there tripping, things were moving. You were, you, were, you were missing impartations and revelation, and then you showed up when class was dismissing. And you think you can go to summer school and get what we got. No, they don't teach this in summer school. I, I can bounce back. I can act a fool and get crazy, and I can just bounce back at will. Do you really think so? One missed season can throw you off decades. That's one of the biggest lies that people think is I can miss it and catch back up or it'll come back around. That is a lie straight from the pit of hell. And see, when, you, when you're not in tune to the spirit, you don't even know what you're missing in seasons. You don't even know what a service is releasing and you're missing it. You don't know what's here to be caught and not taught. You can miss the revelation and it can derail you. I just thought I can just jump in anytime. I, let me ask you a question. This just popped up in my shaman now. How many classes do you think the apostles missed in three and a half years? Not one? They went home looking at it on Facebook? Because Jesus was doing more than teaching them. Jesus was shifting them, and he was imparting. He was shifting their, their perspective, their paradigm, and he was imparting the things that they would need to carry this gospel to the end of the world. Peter say, my mother-in-law sick. He said, we'll come to your house today and have a class. But before class started, he went in there and touched her by the hand. And she got up and started serving them. See, it ain't no excuse in the anointing. People looking for a reason to foul out the game. You know, when I played baseball, because I was a threat to hit a home run, so especially if it was bases loaded or just two people on base, they wouldn't throw to me. The, the back catcher would do this, and he would step over here and catch the ball. They would intentionally walk me because I was a threat. See, some of you are intentionally fouling out. So you don't have to endure the pressure of the season. You're looking for a reason to throw in the tide. I'm trying to help you. I'm not going to teach no message to excite people. I'm trying to help you get developed because time too short for you to keep playing these games. But the, but the last part of this is super important. Verse 5. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, it's amazing I was talking about baseball, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. 
You see, there are rules of engagement. Yes. That's right. yes. When they say Russia has broken war, made war crimes, they have broken the rules. That means there are certain rules even in war. And if you break those rules, there are stiff penalties. Yes. He said you cannot receive a crown unless you strive lawfully. Meaning that there is a, there is a right way to strive. Yes. Y'all didn't read that in your Bible. He said you must compete according to the rules. See, we can't make the rules up. God already established them. And so when you're trying to make up stuff as you go and think that that is law, that's not law. God has established the rules, and you're not even competing if you're not competing based on his rules. You may be showing up, but you're not competing because we have to war lawfully. And you're not warring lawfully if you're getting entangled with the affairs of this world. It ain't talking about you having an affair. It's talking about you getting caught up in what the world caught up in. Your family drama, that's an affair of the world. Getting caught up in drama on your job, that's an affair of the world. Getting caught up in stuff that you have no business getting caught up in because you're supposed to be focused on your kingdom assignment and you're getting pulled into all of this stuff. You're not effective. A distracted soldier is a dead soldier. Listen, in biblical times, those shields of faith, they were huge. They weren't like a little, they were huge. You could block your whole body with a shield. And they had a saying, uh, Sister Pot, they say either return with your shield or on your shield. That means if you lose your shield, lose your life trying to get it back. Meaning your faith is so valuable, we don't even want to see you show up without it. We'd rather see you show up on it, meaning that you died protecting it, than for you just to walk away from it. You were a disgrace. Not if you lost your sword. If you lost your faith. We'll give you a new sword, but that, that, that's custom made, that shield. So if you can't come back with it, come back on it. Let it be your, let it be your coffin if it can't be your protection. Because we talk good talks, but do, can we walk this walk? I'm trying to help you. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. Y'all know it. I'm trying to help. Where your faith at? I don't know. It's out there somewhere. Well, why are you standing here talking then? You don't show up faithless. That means if you were in the army and your, your shield got away from you, you looked high and low. You weren't coming back. You was out there hungry, thirsty, fighting wild animals. You weren't going to just show back up. Because you realize if I don't find it, then I got to give myself up. Because I got to come back on it. And I ain't talking about coming back with your legs crossed. Come back dead. If it can't carry you through it, then it'll carry you back to it. Y'all, 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 y'all don't know what I'm feeling right now. Y'all don't know. I'm telling you, I'm teaching you tonight. I'm getting this word in you because you're going to have to confront. You're going to have to pass this confrontation. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, are you there? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. They ain't carnal, y'all. They mighty in God. Why? For the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds have nothing to do with the devil. Minister Jamel, definition of stronghold is things that hold you strong. This ain't, we ain't going into the enemy camp here. We ain't left the building. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mining through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Things that hold us strong. Casting down, King James say imaginations. 
New King James says arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So what, th this, this right here scripture was twofold. There were a lot of Gnostics trying to refute the word of God. So they want, you know, when people think they know something, they want to argue with you. Yeah. So he said you casting down them arguments, you know, but not just those arguments. It's the internal arguments that we have with ourselves. Yeah. That going back and forth. See, because if you be honest with yourself, everybody has had an argument with themselves. Right. Everybody has looked in the mirror and said, this is a mighty woman of God. And then that, that other voice said, no, you ain't. You ain't all that. So to say you have not had an argument with yourself would be a lie. So we don't just argue. We don't just have arguments out here. We have arguments in here. So casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So these arguments and these strongholds, they are trying to usurp authority over God's word in your life. Those arguments are trying to usurp authority over God's word. Those things that try to hold us strong, they're trying to usurp authority over God's word. That's why he says strongholds and arguments. All of that stuff is internal. I know we made this a warfare scripture, but no, this, this, is, eternal. this is me. This is a me scripture. High thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, this is how we know this is a me scripture. Bring in every thought. How many thoughts? Yeah. Every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So that means there are some thoughts that will try to uh, run amok. Right. Right. There are some thoughts that will just try to run through your head and run amok. Right. And some people do not do anything with them. Yeah. Right. Right. A thought, listen, thoughts that remain unchecked will produce a life that is in prison. Thoughts that remain unchecked will produce a life that is in prison. You will become a prisoner to your thoughts if you do not check your thoughts. Now, I used to hear the old people say, thoughts are like birds. We can't stop them from flying uh, to us, but we can stop them from making a nest in our, in our head. You can't stop a bird from flying across you, but you can, pre you can prevent him from making a nest. In your head. Thoughts may come. But it's what you do with a thought. See, the thought by itself ain't bad. It's what you do with the thought. Because if you do not deal with the thought, you might become a thought. Yeah. <laughs> Judah, why are you laughing at me back there? Jacob, whichever one you are. <laughs> You think, you think that, that thought just became a thought? No, that was a thought before they became a thought. So he said, I got to cast down imaginations and every high thing that tried to exalt itself above the knowledge of God or the word of God in my life. So that doesn't mean thoughts don't come. I got to cast them down. How do you cast them down? With the word of God. You know what I'm talking about? Get away from me, thought. Ah. <laughs> no, no, that ain't how you deal with a thought. That thought, I'm just going to keep it clean. That thought say, well, you ain't going to never be nothing. You're going to be broke all your life. And what you going to say? You might be. No, you say, uh-uh. The Bible says yeah. that I'm the head and not the tail. Yeah. The Bible says yeah. that I'm blessed coming and going. The Bible says that I will lend to many nations, that I shall, you got you to gotta refute thoughts with the word. Amen. You feeling lonely, won't you um, go call, uh-uh, the devil is alive. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. At his right hands are pleasures forevermore. He said he'll never leave me, nor forsake me. I might be feeling lonely, but I'm never alone because he said he'll be with me to the end of the world. You got to start casting them down with the word. I don't talk about, well, I am kind of lonely. I wonder, is anybody hanging out at the mall a day that, that is of interest? Y'all? Let me, let me finish reading this. 
So we bring every thought into captivity. That means you don't become a captive. You bring your thoughts captive. Meaning that you imprison them. You don't let them imprison you. To the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You can't punish disobedience till you're obedient. How do I punish disobedience? By being obedient. Church people just let thoughts come. How do you know this apostle? Because you look at their life. You didn't just show up at the club the other night. That was in your thought life. I don't know how I got there, Apostle. And then I, next thing I know, I had, had me a uh, margarita. And I don't know. I was just, just sipping. And I just, it's like a blur. I don't know. Then I end up at the hotel. And uh, I don't know how my clothes got off. I don't, I, they was on the floor. And I, you, you know, you know, you didn't see, you didn't, you didn't stop the movie. You, you didn't stop the movie. You, let, you kept on letting it play out. You didn't hit stop and delete. You let it play out. When you let it play out, you're going to act it out. You're going to be the best actor in the movie. Y'all ain't going to talk. They ain't not going to talk to me. You know... <laughs> You know, I had on, I, my, my, my car got serviced yesterday, so I got a rental car. And when I was hitting the power to try to listen to the radio, it's some music started playing. So somebody had left a CD in there. And I was looking at the titles, the bloody something, and I said, oh, my God, what kind of music? I had to eject it. I ain't just hit stop. I ejected it out and put it over the visor. I said, I don't want that in my spirit. I don't know what kind of people, bloody and all kind of crazy all kind of crazy titles. But it was my responsibility to stop it and to eject it. I wasn't going to listen to it and say it might be some good musicals, but uh -uh, no, I saw, when I saw it was wrong. You see it's wrong and you won't delete you just, you just, you see that movie playing, instead of you counseling and deleting it, here you is. Mm. Got your popcorn. And got into it. And then you want, wow, well, I feel in some type of way. You ought to slap your own self. You ought to slap, you know why you feel in some type of way. What did you entertain? He said, you got to cast down these imaginations. You can't even be going to sleep with your TV on. It's all kind of stuff come on in the, in the midnight hour. My wife used to listen to the radio, gospel radio station. And then, like, late, they have all kind of people on there. And see, my spirit is never asleep. I hear everything going on. My body can be asleep. I can wake up and tell her everything that they said on TV. And so we woke up one morning. It felt funny in the house. Say, um, they had a man on there called Reverend Roosevelt selling his lucky dimes. I say, and saying that he can get you healed and he can get a curse off. I say, he got had witchcraft on there. I said, you can't be going to sleep with this stuff on there because you don't know what the devil going to sneak in. Thankfully, my spirit is always alert. But people that <laughs> don't know what's going to happen. She would look at a preacher. I will wake up and tell her everything he said. She said, you will sleep. I said, my spirit never sleep. My spirit don't require sleep. My body does. Rest is for your body, not your spirit. Oh, y'all might get this next week. Oh, I'm about out of time. Oh, Lord. I wanted to give y'all a gift tonight. I wanted to give you four things that the enemy is after. Can I give you one? <laughs> the first thing, the enemy is after your word. Go to Mark 4.14. He is after your word. 
Notice uh, when, when Jesus resurrected and he told them to touch him um, because a spirit does not have flesh and bone. Notice he did not say he had blood, but he had flesh and bone because the life of the earth man is in the blood. He is in a resurrected body. He was no longer confined to earth. He did not need blood. You won't have blood when you get your glorified body. Why? Because the life of the animal is in the blood. Once the blood drains, the life goes. Why are you telling us that? Because your spirit man does not need rest. Your flesh needs rest. And the reason your flesh needs rest is because it houses or it carries your spirit. Your spirit ain't sleep. Your spirit does not sleep. You can hear every creep that creep in the house. You can hear the wind blowing, but you, your body sleep, but your spirit ain't sleep. Oh, I got to read. I got to go. I got two minutes. Oh, my God. Oh, Mark 4, 414, are you there? Yeah. Listen to this. Uh, the sower sows the word. What does the sower sow? The word. Mm. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately. When does he come? Immediately. immediately and takes away the word that was sown into their hearts. Satan is after your word. He don't wait. He comes immediately because he want to get it before it stick. He want to get it before it stick. Immediately Satan comes to steal the word. That means if he comes to steal, we have to guard it. How valuable is it to you? There are certain things we keep in a safe that's valuable. Sometimes you go out of your house to a lockbox, a safety deposit box. It depends on the value of what you're trying to protect. We protect everything but the word. Uh, you, you, are you going to that level? Okay. Are you going to that extent to protect the word as you are your diamonds? Your heirloom that Big Mama left you? Are, are you going to great extent to protect the word? The Bible says guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. You got to guard the word. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why you got to hide it in your heart so the enemy won't steal it? Right. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Yeah. The only way you're going to keep from sinning is you got to guard your heart and you got to hide the word in yeah. your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm out of time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's kingdom investment time. Amen. If you need the envelope, raise your hand. So you were Judah back there. You Jacob. Now, Judah is the drummer, right? Y'all switching up tonight. Oh, okay. Y'all, see, y'all can't do me like that. I, I done told y'all. Y'all got to stop doing me like that. Now, I know Judah is the drummer. Now, Jacob done got up there. So now I'm confused. Praise the Lord. Were y'all blessed tonight? Amen. Yes. Amen. Now, don't be forgetful here, but be doers of the word. That word right there helped keep you on the straight and narrow if you apply it. Thank you for watching Transforming Lives. We hope that this message has been a blessing to you. Our mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrates the power of the word in every arena of life. Sowing a seed to our ministry will help to fulfill our mission. There are multiple ways to give to WLCI. You may text to WLCIG to 54244 or give through our website at www.wordlifecenter.org. Or you may also send a seed offering to Post Office Box 293, Kannapolis, North Carolina, 28082. 
The word of God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Thank you in advance for supporting Word Life Center International. And we like, this is a great blessing to me and my family. Well, not, not necessarily. You were seduced into worshiping something other than God. See, the devil didn't just come and say, worship me. But he knew if he could get you to pursue the money or the situation, that's, that's pulling you away from worship. And you make that decision and all hell start breaking loose in your life. You end up with cancer. That $50,000 got sucked up in medical bills. Your marriage start going haywire. Your children get strung out on drugs. And you're like, what? what's going on? Well, first of all, you got seduced out of position. You were worshiping the money and not really God. Because when you are a worshiper of God, everything goes into consideration. Everything goes into prayer. Everything goes into counsel. Because I don't want to miss God because of an opportunity. From the author of Occupy comes a new bestseller, Capacity. The ability to hold and handle what has been given. Order your copy of Apostle Jeff Sanders' newest book, Capacity, now available at Amazon.com. Capacity is available on paperback and also on Kindle. Let's stay connected. We have multiple ways for you to connect with us. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. For more information about our ministry, visit us online at wordlifecenter.org or call us at 704-298-0845. We here at WLCI would love for you to come visit us where our pastors, Jeff and Michelle Sanders, teach the uncompromised Word of God. Their mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrate the power of the Word in every arena of life. Come visit us at 1124 Rosewood Avenue in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Thank you for joining us today in Transforming Lives. We pray that the message has blessed you and that it has pulled you closer to God and His Word. Until next time, remember to be transformed by the renewing of your mind.